Part of the problem with the media is a lack of self-awareness of how far to the left we are. I am very self-aware of how bad Breitbart is. I'm very mm -hmm. self-aware that InfoWars is not for public consumption. Uh, you know, I'm very aware of who our problems are. I don't think the left has self-awareness of its, of its blind spots, how deeply imbalanced it is. Take it inside the newsroom, though, if, if you would. So now you're not talking about, you're, you're not talking about opinion journalists, uh, people who are on television trying to give their opinions. Inside the Washington Post newsroom, I mean, is there a sense that basically everyone's kind of on the same political team, nobody really talks about that? And, and it, if so, I mean, does it cause a problem? Well, I mean, nobody talks about politics, and I think there's an awareness that we live in a place where we're, the people we know, uh, people who are at our kids' schools, our friends, are all liberal. I mean, D.C. is an extremely liberal place. We, there are some conserv sort of professional conservatives. Not that I mean they're being paid to be conservatives, but they're conservatives <laughs> usually. They work in the conservative media world. or they, you, know, we, you meet people who are sort of like in the political game somehow as conservatives. Um, so I think that... I think the, I, I don't buy into the idea that we're all out to sort of prove a liberal point or to, to sort of tilt the world to show you the li how liberals are right. What we, where we do run into problems, though, is that a lot of journalism, how you select your ideas, is what surprises you, right? Mm -hmm. You say that, you know, it's especially true with editors. Like, what, you know, when I covered the cops, the editors would be like, I saw a policeman parked on 7th Street today. Can you figure out why that is? Uh, <laughs> you know, like, the, there would be... You know, you're, you're, you tend to use yourself as a mirror for the world, right? What surprises you, you tend to think will surprise readers. And so what surprises you if you live in a world where everybody you talk to outside of work is a liberal are different things than will surprise somebody who doesn't live in a bubble like that. And so I think a lot of our work has to be to sort of control for that and try to, try to find the ideas we're looking for uh, outside the what would surprise a liberal. And by the way, one of the other ways in which our profession is not a proxy for the country is that you know the demographics of the media look roughly like the demographics on this stage. It is also very racially uh, you know, monolithic. Um, and, that we, and it's wealthy. And it's wealthy. It's affluent. It's very white. It's very male still. There are a lot more women editors that are sort of coming up. And I mean this including in the liberal media. If you look at the mastheads mm -hmm. of major Absolutely. liberal publications, they are very white. And they'll maybe have the one black guy. We've got to have the one ta Coates guy like, duplicated in every... You know, and once they hire the one, well, you know, no one, no one else black is getting on that masthead because, you know, we got, the ta we got ta Nahasi, we got Jamil Smith here, we've got, you know, Jamel Bowie. They each have one, you know, and so the, and, and, and they want that one to write about race, you know, and, and I can recall being, the, you know, when you're sort of the only one, you know, I, you know, I, we had an experience that I talked about this earlier. I was at the Grio and Whitney Houston died and I loved Whitney Houston. But, you know, they came looking for me. And, you know, can you talk about Whitney Houston? I said, no, I got a guy. I, I was able to use that moment to promote someone else to do it. Who, here's another black person you can put on TV. <laughs> so I think we have a real challenge in our profession with diversity of ideas, but also with just diversity, diversity.